Now the lightning arrester and this whole grounding, it's not for lightning. Now it's videos like these that aren't gonna get a lot of views, but I think it's super important nevertheless. I myself am building a crypto mining empire and if you wanna achieve anything like that or maybe you wanna achieve even more, <coughs> Jesus. This is one of those key fundamental things that you're gonna have to learn. I'm sharing my experience as I go. I don't know everything. If you know more than me, please comment down below, help us out. I worked in the military with uh, electronics, so I do have a little bit of understanding about electricity, not huge like grounding systems, right? A lot of this stuff is new to me. I got nothing special to me. Let me show you exactly what I did to ground my helium hotspots. Now the lightning arrester and this whole grounding, it's not for lightning. Chicken and the egg kind of situations where it's kind of for both. Let me explain why. The the point of grounding your helium hotspot is so that you create a discharge of the static electricity that's going to be building up in your helium hotspot. Now the static is built up by winds and it can be harmful if it just builds up and then goes to your motherboard. For those of you who don't know anything about electronics, a lot of the times you don't want to touch the actual motherboard or the actual circuit board themselves because sometimes you could shock it. You have a different charge than the actual equipment itself and you can create something to get fried or just get damaged one way or the other. Nevertheless, that's caused by static discharge. Now that static, if it gets created and built up and it doesn't get discharged, then and you just have this piece of equipment that is just swinging around the air and it has this static electricity charge when a storm comes around and then lightning is nearby it's going to follow the path of least resistance so if you have this antenna that's swinging around it's now super conductive because there's static electricity built up you're just asking for lightning to strike lightning usually hits the highest place that is a misconception it follows the most conductive route more often than not it probably will be the highest point so first thing is the reason for the discharge unit is that they antennas can build up a sizable static charge which must be dissipated so basically everything i just said now all you need to ground your helium hotspot is going to be some grounding cable right some electro wire copper cable and then you're going to need the grounding rod and then you're going to need the lightning arrester now this grounding rod that we mentioned in general grounding rods put in vertically need to be about eight feet deep into the soil or if in a in a very rocky area about 2.5 deep when installed horizontally now this is a clip of the eight foot grinding rod walking to home depot it's going to be in the interest of the electrical aisle it's pretty cheap as you can see now if you've seen my universal setup video i also get a lot of components from this aisle now going back to this it says lighting is hard on trees thousands of trees are stuck by lightning each day hold on don't freak out trees are usually the tallest object in the landscape and their deep roots make them nature's lightning rods so if you have a tree installed like me you probably make sure that you ground this thing like i'm about to show you now this here is a lightning arrester if you look at this red piece you can uh slide in the grounding cable and then you're gonna have to crimp it down with some pressure but if that gives you some trouble which it probably will especially if you don't have the right tools we can easily fix this and get around this and of course as a reminder the links are down below so i really do appreciate you guys using that this is an old video i don't need you to watch it i'm gonna walk you through it just a little bit so um as you notice, I didn't use that red clip because it was giving me trouble and we couldn't crumb it down. Once we squeezed that red piece, it's metal on the inside and it, it collapses on the copper wire, making it very hard to move out. So once you crimp it down, it's it's in there. You can't pull it back out. We ended up breaking that little metal piece, primarily my fault because I didn't have the right tools. So again, if you don't have the right tools, it might not work out for you. But all I did was I made a little hoop right with the copper wire and then I put the screw on it and I just hooked it onto the screw. Now, once you screw this down with the hook, this is not going anywhere either. But I did a secondary method of redundancy here and I got this little hose clamp, making sure that there's nothing that gets in the way. And then once you're done with that, you just weatherproof that and then you should be good to go for the next step. If you look up grounding rod, you can see a couple of visuals of what's gonna happen. And let's go over just what this actually looks like. This is what that message was talking about. Eight foot like this or 2.5 feet if it's a uh, horizontal. I mean, I guess you could just do like a mixture of both in between. In my previous experience, all the land feels completely different. There's some land that after digging, I'm like, wow, I could, I'm surprised I don't sink through this. And then there's some land that's like, I feel like I just started digging into a rock. Honestly, good luck. I hope that you get some good soil because if not, it's going to be rough. Now guys, if you have a home, right? I'm saying this because if, if you live in an apartment, it doesn't apply to you. But if you have a house and you have a dish network antenna or maybe you have some other kind of antenna, you might notice that there is something right next to your uh, power panel unit. This is what's gonna be happening. This is what it looks like. Now we're gonna go over two scenarios. For one, uh, I do tree installs and flagpole installs. So we're gonna be using a grounding rod specifically uh, for that. Now, if you're just putting it on top of your roof or on the side of your roof, then you can easily use this. The reason being is because now I don't want to get anybody screwed over. So, you know, you make your own decisions at the end of the day. But I mean, think about it. You've had antennas. You you've have probably trees around you. If they're not getting struck, your antenna is not going to get struck, especially if you ground it. You're not creating any uh, kind of hazard. That's the point of grounding it. So if you're putting it on top of a, a house, odds are you're not going to be creating that much static electricity. Now, if you live in the middle of nowhere and you've got like crazy windstorms, all right. 
Maybe you might conduct a little bit of electricity. I'm no expert guys. I just want you guys to be informed of what is going on. So if you ground into the side of this box, usually you'll see like a green cable that's already tied up to this. This illustration here shows uh, ideally what's gonna happen. So we have the lightning rod, which would be the antenna this time. And then you have the wire, right? Those are the green wire that we talked about. And then you have the ground rod, which is again, what we showed in Home Depot. It's really that simple. And then this is what uh, we were doing. We were literally just bashing this thing into the ground. Now this picture here shows the end result of what it looks like when you attach the end of the cable. You're gonna have a little clamp that comes with the grounding rod. If it doesn't come with the grounding rod, make sure you do get one. All you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten the bolt and you're going to stick the wire in between there and make sure that it's conducting. This is only a small bit of that rod that's sticking up from the ground, but there's a whole lot of rod that you have to hammer down. And you're probably gonna need to use a ladder when you first start. And I'm telling you, this looks easy, but we were here for like a solid 20 minutes, me and the bro, and we were just kind of going back and forth. So putting the grounding rod into the ground was actually pretty difficult, but it is very, very doable. It's just gonna take a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. Now, if you're grinding it to the side of the house because you're doing a rooftop install, you shouldn't really have a problem. And honestly, in my opinion, I've done a couple installs. I don't have anything to worry about. I think the most important thing is understanding how lightning works, understanding the point of the lightning arrester and the, the rounding system, because if lightning does for any magical reason strike your antenna, the lightning arrester is not gonna save your hotspot. It's probably gonna fry it, but it's gonna, it's gonna send the rest of the charge elsewhere and not like fry, fry everything in your house and start a house fire. So that's the point of all this is that you don't direct a charge into you know your home if there is no other path to, to follow it's gonna follow the path of your antenna and your cables and it's gonna you know that's how house fire start anyways as always thank you for being here i'll see you guys in the next video